on this rail, what I do is I, when I do the feather strip, I'll start at the side pocket. If you are doing an end rail, start in the middle and kind of work your way out. But on a side rail, go ahead and start at the side pocket. I'll press this in and get it started a little bit. And then I pull lengthwise, so I'm pulling down this way as I put this in. I try to keep it as even as I can. This one's not perfect to get a little wider here. It's a little narrower there, but it's in there. And I try to stay near the edge. I try to have a little bit left over. Um, and then the important part here is when you get down near the corner pocket, notice that I intentionally pulled it a little bit this way. So there's a lot more cloth right there. And what that does is when you actually bring this over, it helps kind of eat up a little of that extra cloth so I don't have extra folds up here. But I'm not doing that. I want it straight down at the side pocket. Um, and then what I want to do is make sure that a couple little notes, if this feather strip does break, you can use just a little bit of masking tape to tape it back together and pound it in. Um, when you're actually pounding it in, you do want to use a block of wood or something to spread out the force over this rail. Um, if you just pound in one little spot, you have a tendency to crack these feather strips and break them. Alright, I'll have more little videos as I go on. Once this is all pounded in, I also want to go trim along this side and trim off this excess. If this cloth is sticking up when you cover it, you may see that in the finished product, like bulging out and bulges. So you want to trim that off and don't forget that step. So here's the trimmed finished product. I usually take a little cut from here and kind of diagonal out a little bit and then trim and kind of clean that up. Um, there might be a little bit, but as long as it's minimal, you're all right. This one I might have to clean up just a hair more. And down here I kind of have the similar thing where I've cut kind of from the corner out a little bit. Then once I cover that up, um, there'll be some excess. I'll show the finished product in the next stage too. So here's the first bit of stapling. By the side pocket, what I do is I pull this way. So I'm pulling diagonal out and try to get that nice and tight and snug put the first couple staples in. And then I'm basically spacing them out about every inch and a half or so. Um, here's kind of where I ended up coming together from the two ends. Um, sometimes if you get a little pucker, you can put an extra staple in there. Now down at the other end, by the corner pocket, what you see is I first did a staple and I'm pulling this way. So I'm trying to pull as much of the, any puckers out of this face, cushion facing as I can. And then I slowly like puckered up and keep overlapping and I pull all the folds down underneath the rail. So then once you look at the face, you see very, very little. And once I actually pull and finish the side pocket, even that little bit of puckering tends to disappear. As you can see. So here's what I, and this, this is the end rail. And what I end up doing is I take this little bit of extra cloth, I'll tuck it underneath, and I can pull this way. And once again, you see that almost all that puckering disappears almost completely. And then I'll put a couple staples right there to get kind of that finished part, and then I'll be trimming off the excess. I have the side pockets. These work a little different. I'll pull, first of all, on that cushion face, and I'm gonna pull over here. So I pull that nice and flat. Put a staple in there. Then I can basically, I like to cut a little relief cut down here. That helps get the cloth out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to fold it down and pull this real tight and straight. So I want a nice straight line right here along the edge of that cushion face and this is going to be what's pointing out into the table. Um, and you can see this all gets nice and flat. So I'll pull that down, hold it. You should put two staples in there just for good insurance. And then I want to put like two staples over here, kind of pull that out flat and back. Sometimes you'll hit that staple that's underneath there. In which case, I just have to pull that one out and do a new one. And go ahead and stop. So here's kind of the finished product. 
you can see I trimmed all the excess cloth off. I try to stay about 3 16ths of an inch away from those staples so the cloth doesn't pull out and start um, stripping. And down here you can kind of see where I was going to have a little pucker where the two ends kind of came together. Um, so I put one extra staple in there to suck that out. Um, and here's my side pocket. Um, kind of all done. The light in here isn't real good. And if I flip this over, you kind of see there's very, very minimal folds by the side pocket when you're looking down on it. It's nice and smooth um, all the way down. And over here in the end, if I move this into the light, you can see that there's pretty much no fold at that corner pocket. You don't see any little puckering or anything like that. So that's a pretty nicely done pocket. One other little thing, and this depends on what kind of cloth you have. This is actually a mix of wool and nylon, so it has some stretch to it. So like if you run your finger along the nose, sometimes I can feel like ever so slightly a little dimple. I can't really see it, but I can feel one. There's one right there. That's from the staple kind of pulling in a little bit. This cloth will relax a little bit. So that is a prior to the proper tension. If there's a big dimple, sometimes you can actually see it kind of wavering up and down all the way on the rail. That's bad. But a little tiny bit is actually going to end up being good. If you don't have that tight enough where you feel a little tiny dimple sometimes, um, then what you're going to end up with is loose cloth later. Now I'm getting ready to actually do the bed cloth on this table. Um, what I actually do is I kind of lay the whole thing out. And what I do is I start off in one corner, I'm going to choose a corner, and I make sure on the end it's overhanging far enough um, that I've got plenty of room to staple, and I'm obviously not stretching on the first corner that I do. So I'll staple here, and then over here when I walk over to the other corner, you notice this is kind of laying just even with the slate. So this cloth is a stretchy cloth that's got nylon in it. So when I actually do, I'll staple that first corner, and then I'm going to pull it this way, um, and get this nice and tight. I'll gain a good three or four inches over here and then I'll have enough to do this side. So I'll do the end and then I'll go down to that far corner and I'm stretching trying to keep this overhang constant. So I'm going to make sure that I'm stretching straight this way and not pulling diagonally this way. If I pull diagonally this way I'm going to run out of space over in that corner. So I'm going to pull this corner straight down and then I'll go to that last corner and I pull the heck out of it going that way. So I'm pulling both out and lengthwise. So I'll go ahead and staple this part and then come back and kind of show you what the next step will be. So now I've stapled this first end and you can kind of see it's puckered up weird where there's some pressure on it. When I actually pulled this way, I sta pulled hard, stapled this end, and then kind of went back and made sure it was even all the way along and I stapled this. Now when I go down to the other end of the table, you see, it looks like this cloth might be short, but this stuff has, it stretches a lot. So I can easily get it down over there and do that pull, and then I'll come over this way, and I'm gonna pull this way to pull the rest of that out, and then I'll have enough room over here in the corner, but right now it kinda looks like it's short over here. All right, I'll stable this next part and come back and show again. So now I came down and I pulled at this end, and you can kinda see my overhang here is kind of consistent from one end to the other. I might have made this a little tight, so when I actually go do the side, I'll probably staple this side first so I have room. And then I kind of went along here. I, was, I stapled this corner first, which is kind of making that straight. And then I went to this corner and pulled as tight as I could this way, put about four or five staples in here. And then I went all along here and I pulled pretty much where every staple pulled this nice and tight. So that pulls most of the puckers out for the lengthwise on the table. The side ones were actually gonna get pulled out when I staple the sides. All right, so I'll probably start over here on this side and go ahead and pull this. I'm gonna be trying to keep this relatively even. I don't wanna to go too tight on the first side, but make sure I have an even amount of pull over. And then when I'm done with this, I'll show you a little video of that. Then I'll move over to the other side and staple the last side and all those puckers will disappear. So now you can see I stapled that first side, and what I really focused on on the side was just trying to make sure that that pull was constant. So it's coming down the same amount all along this whole side of the table. And then 
that pretty much got rid of any puckers on this half of the table although there might be some tiny ones and then when I go to the other side you can still see it's kind of folded up there when I pull this side it may look like it's a little tight in a couple spots I'm in the slates right there but once I pull this I'll have several inches to be able to pull over that um, and I'll pull this as tight as I possibly can all the way along and all those folds out of the top of the table will disappear alright so this was the first side that I did and I had that nice even pull all the way down so I, now that at that point I was able to come over here and I pull really tight and staple it so I got a nice even pull all the way down that side of the table um, I'm putting staples every inch and a half or so um, and then that ends up with trying to have everything real nice and even um, this cloth is real tight I can't stretch it at all um, it is kind of a little bit noteworthy I'm doing this in October I don't like doing tables in like December January February around here because if it's really cold and dry I may have the cloth really tight that day but come June July it gets nice and loose and you can start seeing like possible bubbles or if you push it with your thing you can actually push the cloth back and forth but if you do it during the summer or kind of in the fall on a kind of slightly warmer humid day then this cloth will stay nice and tight um, all winter and then come next spring it'll still be tight so there's not a problem with that cloth coming loose and kind of bubbles and stuff like that all right the next step is I'll be cutting these pockets out what I like doing is if I press down in the middle you can see uh, where that slate is so I will end up cutting some uh, slots and I generally stay about a quarter or a half inch probably closer to half an inch away and I'll pull I'll do a slice like this slice here another slice here um, there and then I'll take each of those little triangles and I pull them down underneath and staple them underneath um, and I do that for each of the pockets um, this cloth is, it does have nylon in it so it is stretchy it's a little bit more forgiving if you do Simonis 860 not 860 HR this is you have to be really precise with all this stuff because it's not very forgiving um, 860 is wool there's no nylon the costs with nylon have a little bit of stretch it's a lot easier to kind of cover these and make them look nice uh, so here's our finished product a couple of little uh, notes to basically say as you reassemble this. I really try to be really careful to keep all the tools off of the table. I don't want to put any tools or bolts or anything that can leave a little debris on the brand new cloth. Uh, another thing is when I assemble the top together, um, I do it all kind of loose. And then I go back once I get the rails lined up in particular, make sure this goes like straight in an absolute straight line down on both sides. Um, and I really get down there and eyeball that. Once I'm convinced that those are straight, then I go back and tighten everything up. Um, so that's kind of the finished product. You can kind of see what we end up with on, on our pockets, pocket folds. Corners, there's no real folds. Um, if you kind of remember the step where I had, when I was actually doing the feather strip and had it kind of edged over a little bit further, you can kind of see that help pull out. There's no little puckers anywhere on those corner pockets. So this isn't really designed to necessarily teach you every little thing, but it gives a lot of good insights into how to do various parts of the table. Thanks for watching.